to help answer those questions and break down the new report. Michael Mann, a distinguished professor from Penn State University and author of The Hockey Stick and the Climate Wars, and Brian Walsh, environmental editor at Time Magazine. So, so Michael, I want to start with you and just talk sort of more about the real-world implications uh, of global warming slash climate change. What is, um, beyond what I mentioned there, sort of the real-world scenario of what will happen if we don't tackle global warming? Yeah, well, I think uh, this new report, uh, more so than any previous uh, report from the IPCC, really drives home the fact that uh, climate change and global warming are not just some far-off abstract problem that might affect polar bears you know decades from now um, it's impacting us negatively here and now um, in every continent what the report shows is that in every continent of the world we are seeing adverse impacts already uh, on food on water availability on land on human health on our economies and as a result of that, um, national security as well, increased conflict, more competition among a growing population for diminishing food, water, land, diminishing resources, a perfect prescription for increased conflict. Uh, in a sense, we are now the polar bear. And I mean, Brian, you have a piece up about this um, today detailing the report and sort of talking about it. It's still, though, an abstraction for most people. Either A, they just don't believe in global warming. You have a certain subset of people who just don't believe in it at all, or who do believe in it but don't really see that as any immediate threat to their own personal lives. What's the challenge as a science reporter trying to get people to see the here and now impact? Well, the challenge is really to get them to understand, to think long term. That's not something that we as a species are very good at, not something we're so great at as a country either. So, I mean, it's, it's sort of trying to both make it very clear what's going on right now I mean, we see the oceans becoming more acidic which is having a, a huge impact on marine life you know we're seeing changes in water which you know look at what's happening in California right now these are real world impacts that will get worse which is what this report's really focusing on so the question is all right now that we know that well what are we actually going to do about it okay, what are we going to do about it well, I mean, here in the United States, uh, the, sort of the big action is going to be with the EPA. Certainly, uh, President Obama is going to be pushing forward regulations on carbon emissions sometime soon. That's going to be a huge lift. Uh, but really, that's his only choice at this point. I mean, Congress, I don't see anything happening there given the current makeup right now. And then you have to think about globally because, I mean, the U.S., as big as it is, only a, a certain percentage of, of global carbon emissions. You need to think about what, what are like China, India going to do, and that could mean something on the global scale as well. I mean, and Michael, I believe China has now surpassed the United States in emissions, so how do you tackle a problem like that? It is international in scope, and the United States is not the sort of sole bad guy in terms of, uh, in sort of ruining the, the, the atmosphere with carbon emissions. Well, you know, we have to set a good example um, for the rest of the world to follow. After all, we've had uh, a legacy of uh, two centuries of access to cheap dirty fossil fuel energy and we know that that um, that two centuries of fossil fuel burning has had an inverse impact on the planet uh, so if we are to ask other countries like china and india that are uh, now uh, developing their own economies uh, if we are to ask them to decrease their carbon emissions then we have to show some moral leadership on this problem uh, we have to get our own house in order and ironically we are falling behind the rest of the world china india other nations are actually investing a lot more in renewable energy, in clean energy, than we are here in the U.S., and that's that's a problem. And I mean, so in, uh, Brian, in this country, Ed Markey and Barbara Boxer are sort of leading the charge in terms of trying to get something to happen. Uh, I believe they've released a report sort of frightening compendium of coming catastrophe for the planet. There's just been this attempt to raise the alarm among uh, their fellow members of Congress and fellow citizens, but it has not worked. Do you want? I mean, do you have any reporting on why it does seem to fall on such deaf ears? Well, it probably falls on deaf ears because senators and representatives are more concerned about what's going to what's going to happen to them. At the next election than what might happen to their descendants 50, 60, 70 years down the line. And they remember uh, the 2010 cap and trade battle and how that went down to feet even with a much friendlier, more democratic, more progressive Congress than we have now. So barring some political change, and you have people like Tom Steyer, who's the big uh, philanthropist out in California, sort of saying, I'm going to spend $50 million to push climate change as an issue. You'll need to see that change. I think
ballot box, we can really see that going forward in Congress. Well, and also because you do have the imperative a lot of people have just for job creation, mm -hmm. so you still have people fixating on uh, drilling for more oil, doing shale oil, doing the Keystone Pipeline for basic economic reasons, and that's the same thing that plays out in the states. Right, absolutely. I mean, you, you see that in terms of what, what's, it's amazing what's changed really about fossil fuels here in the United States. No one would have expected 10 years ago that we'd be producing all this oil, all this natural gas, and while the natural gas has helped reduce carbon emissions somewhat, really what it's done also is, is sort of tie us even more closely to being a fossil fuel producing country. Well, if you do that and you, do, and you take advantage of that money, it's going to be a lot harder than to get off that habit down the road. And last word to you, Michael. Um, are we just going to be in this problem with people not understanding uh, global warming because they are distracted by the weather? Well, you know, we've always had weather, and, you know, it's cold in the winter. And, yes, this winter was cold, but if you look at the statistics, what you see is that we are actually breaking all-time records for warmth at twice the rate you would expect from chance alone. Um, we're seeing the signal of climate change in our daily weather patterns, and it's already having an adverse impact. There's no question about that. Unfortunately, um, as we've alluded to here, there are uh, some uh, special interests who have uh, poisoned the well somewhat when it comes to having a meaningful discussion about this problem. Uh, the Koch brothers, for example, have invested tens of millions of dollars in actually running primary campaigns against Republicans who have recognized climate change as a challenge. Uh, conservative Republicans um, like Bob Inglis from South Carolina, he was primaried out of his House seat uh, by a Koch brothers funded candidate simply because he acknowledged that climate change is a threat. And you know, we can have a debate about how to solve the problem. And there's room for people of all political views at the table when it comes to having that discussion. We can't continue to pretend that the problem doesn't exist. All right, indeed. Um, thank you so much.